Hi, welcome back. In this topic now, we will be looking at two other topics, parameterized mappings and lookups. So we will get started first with parameterized mapping. Let's look our, at our file to file scenario, uh, the mapping for our file to file scenario. Okay, here we go. This is the mapping for our file to file scenario. Uh, I'll pop this out as always, I popped it out. And in this, let's go ahead and execute our mapping, right? Okay, and I've executed my mapping and everything seems to be working fine, right? Now my business comes to me today and says, hey, when you're doing the concatenation of the first name and the last name, can you concatenate it with a comma, right? All right, you say, no problem. I go to my mapping and do a comma here and I say, this is done, right? You save your mapping, you activate your mapping and, sorry, where's activate here? Yeah. I've activated my mapping and you tell the business that the changes are done. You test your mapping as well by executing it here. And once I've executed, I test my mapping. Yes, the mapping is now changed with, is, is delimited with a comma. Sounds good. So now you transport this mapping to QA and to production and you go live. One day after you go live, your, your business comes back to you and say, oops, that was a mistake on my end. Can you change this from a comma? to a hash. You will say, the typical answer in typical organizations would be, yes, of course, I can make this change, but this change will get deployed into production now only in the next change window, which in any organization could be every week, a month, you do not know. And your business is going to flip saying, but this is a simple change, why can it not be done? So the idea is, is there a way, the message that I'm leading towards is, is there a way where you can make this configurable? where I can pass parameters to my map mapping that are configurable so that if there is a change tomorrow, I do not need to make a change to my mapping, but I do the change in my integration directory. Something similar to what we saw as a fixed value and a value mapping, but now for parameters within your mapping. Is that something that we can do? The answer is yes, you can. And that is where parameterized mappings come into picture. How do we define a parameterized mapping, right? Go into the first, open up your message mapping. Now we are still in our file to file mapping. I'm going to go into my signature tab and within my signature tab, at the bottom, you will see something called parameters. Let's go ahead and call a create a parameter. I'll create this call parameter called concat delimiter, right? And I'm going to call it as a type, sim simple type, excuse me. The type is XSD string and the it can be an import or an export parameter. Let's for now, we'll only focus on the import parameters. So I've done that and I'm saving my mapping. Now I go back to the definition of my mapping, right? I double click on the concat and now I see a new option here, input help for delimiter string. I select that. It, it says, hey, select parameter. Let's expand this. You see select parameters and it's asking you which parameter and I say concat delimiter. Perfect. And now, if you see the delimiter string is a concat delimiter string that it's going to happen. All right. So let's go ahead. I've done my save. So let's go ahead and execute the mapping you think. And what happens? It says no value assigned to parameter. Parameter is therefore given an initial value. Why did that happen? So how, when I'm testing here, how do I assign a parameter? Do you see this tab called parameter? So far, we've only focused on this tab document. Click on this tab called parameters and when you click on this tab, you will see the import parameters here. So let's go ahead and say hash out here and execute. And now you see it becomes John hash do, Jane hash do. Perfect. So first step is done. We've defined in our message mapping, in our signature, we've defined a parameter. We've gone to our concat statement and we've also used the parameter there. Similarly, let's do one more thing. Let's also say date format right and i'm going to call it a simple type it's again xsd integer okay now i'll go into my definition and for my date of birth in my date transformation i know the input is always going to be the same but for the output i'll just copy this and put it here in my notepad and i'm going to say in my selection help i'm going to say use date format it should be visible somewhere here okay
so looks like the date format does not support it i will get back to you on that so i was hoping to be able to do that for the date format as well uh, to use a parameterized mapping for date transformation but looks like uh, so let's do one thing I'll, I'll just try a workaround and i see if that works i'll say dollar let's look at the parameter cancel this okay the default is here let's let's come back to that uh, let the date, date format be the same we'll just focus on the delimiter for this right uh, or rather let's let's just give it a quick shot it could be a workaround that is needed so i'm going to call it as concat this okay and here in my date transformation i'm going to go here and just put a dollar dollar and call it as date delimiter and let's see if this works okay i'm now going here I'm going to my parameters. My concat delimiter is this. Okay, it is called date format, so no worries. We'll change that. Uh, and it says this is of type yymmdd, right? And I come back. It's called date format, right? Okay. So I go to my definition. I double click. And I call it date format. I say okay. I save. I go to my test tab again. I will go to need to go to the parameters and enter enter that, and I'll enter my date format and I'm going to execute it. I'm not sure if this works. Okay, it doesn't work. PI doesn't support it, unfortunately. Uh, uh, so so basically, looks like uh, the parameterized mapping is only supported for a few functions. It is not supported for a date transformation. This could be probably available in the uh, newer releases. So for now, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I just leave it at that, and I'll save it. Okay. So let's go to the signature and remove the date format as well. So now we have the concat delimiter which we have defined. Okay. And let's execute this one more time to make sure we didn't haven't broken anything in that process. Okay. So concat delimiter, I will say hash. I'll execute. okay and it expand okay it's a hash perfect now the next step is now that we made a mapping change we need to now make a change in our operation mapping so let's go into our operation mapping okay let's again pop the operation mapping out go into edit mode of your operation mapping and go into the parameters tab of your operation mapping let's define again a, a, a delimiter here and we are going to call it concat delimiter the name can be anything that we want and it is again simple type xsd string import then you need to click on this binding tab and when you click on the binding tab it's going to ask what is the equivalent binding right i'm going to go in here and select the binding as the same concat delimiter so i've done the binding and now that i've done the binding i'm saving my operation mapping and i'm going to my change list and i'm activating my two changes the change to my message mapping and the change to my operation mapping now once i've done that i'm going to go to my integ my uh, file to file scenario my file to file scenario is here i'm going to go into my interface determination and when i go into my interface determination it automatically detects that here this mapping now has a concat delimiter i go here it asks me for a type it is of type xsd string and i'm going to say hash okay and save this and now let's say activate it and when i activate it i'm done right now let's go ahead and upload my file i'm going to change this i'm going to cg3 by file to file file to file and i okay here there's a mistake i import the file has been written let me open my sender channel from communication channel monitoring okay i go to communication channel monitor i say go i say stop i say start okay now my file should have been picked up so i go to sxmb moni i refresh and let's look at the output that has come technical routing payloads and excellent it's done okay now let's look at the mapping one more time let's try what other options we have 
right? So this is actually a bug out here. Uh, the reason we could not see a date function was because there's a bug. So if I go into the interface determination, right? If I go into the interface determination and try to see a concat delimiter, you see you have multiple more choices. You have XSD date, you have XSD time and so on. Whereas here, you, you do not have that option of XSD date and format. So this is a bug in the current release of PI, the server that we are on. Uh, for the subsequent releases, SAP has provided a, a patch that you can apply the patch and then you'd be able to see XSD date here. And once you see the XSD date here, you should then be able to do the parameterized mapping for the date function as well, right? Because it expects a date function and that's why it did not enable us to do that. All right, so let's close this. Now let's look at file to file ICO00, right? How do we do parameterized mapping for integrated configurations, right? So let's go into the message mapping. I'm into file to file for integrated configuration. Again, I'm going to my concat function. I'm going to my signature functions. I'm going to call it as concat delimiter. And I'm going to call it for now concat delimiter underscore mm, okay? So you know, I'm going to call it concat delimiter. Let me pop it out. For some reason, it doesn't show it. I'm not able to pull it. Okay. So concat delimiter mm xsd type string import perfect save. Now I go into my definition of my message mapping. I double click here. I select this same thing that we did before concat delimiter mm you can see it as concat delimiter mm save and save all right now that that is done let's go ahead into the operation mapping the same way that we did for the operation mapping previously I go into the parameters tab I call this now concat delim underscore operation mapping again category is simple type is integer I save my operation mapping and now I need to do the binding, right? So it's asking what is the, for concat delimiter for the message mapping, what is the corresponding parameter? I select the operation mapping parameter. I say, okay, I save and I'm done. So let's go ahead, activate the two changes. And once I've activated the changes, I am done with this. So now I'm going to go ahead to my integration, integrated configuration. And that is my integrated configuration, file to file ICO00. Now in my integrated configuration, go to the receiver's interfaces and you see it, you, it automatically tells you that, hey, what value do I provide here? All right. So I provided it as hash at both the places. I'm just going ahead and activating my change. And now I'm going to go ahead and upload my file. So I'm going to go upload my file to file ICO and file to file ICO and my file is written and now I'm going to go to PI monitoring I'm going to open my center channel rather so I'm going to go into my inbound processing tab get the name of my center channel and here out here I'm going to select this and saying execute I'm going to stop I'm going to, oh okay the message is processed already awesome I'm going to go to my monitoring. I'm going to go to message monitor. And I'm going to go to database. Okay, so my file system was message was got executed successfully. Or was it executed? Let's go ahead and stop start the stop the channel one more time. Start the channel one more time. And refresh. Okay. Now let's go into file to file ICO here into my directory all right i'll refresh okay there's a new file here and if you see it's perfectly john hash do all right so with this we have executed parameterized mappings where i've been able to successfully pass parameters from the integration directory to my message mapping and they've done it for both classical configuration and for integrated configuration in the next session, we will be looking at RFC lookups. How do we perform lookups uh, in conjunction with parameterized mapping? I shall see you soon.